Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I am Carol Hanover. I'm president of the temple, and it's my privilege to welcome you this morning. I would like, however, to share a few reminders with you. To preserve the sanctity of the service, we ask that you turn off all electronic devi devices now. That includes cameras, telephones, coffee pots, whatever you have. Turn, them, turn it off. Okay, uh, because no photography or videos are per permitted at any time during the service. If you need to leave the sanctuary during the service, we ask that you only use the doors to the rear. Restrooms, including an all-gender single restroom, are right down the hall. We ask that no one enters or exits the sanctuary when the congregation is standing or when the ark is open. If you come to the door and see people standing, please wait by the door. In the very, very, very unlikely event that we need to evacuate the building for, for an emergency, please locate the exit nearest you with a lighted exit sign. If you look over there, you can see one there, and there are two to the rear, and there's even one here. If we do need to evacuate, please follow the directions of our very skilled and experienced ushers. <laughs> Thank you, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hey, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hey, Shabbat shalom. Hey, Shabbat shalom. Hey, Shabbat shalom. shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I'm Rabbi Sam Blumberg. I'm Cantor David Wolf. And we are so very honored to be together this morning as we celebrate this wonderful day of Shabbat, this day of rest and community. And we also celebrate these six folks who are up here on the bima with us as part of our B'nai Torah service. We celebrate Laura Moyer, Ellie Anbinder, Ted Geller, Ellen Jayer, Sue Siegel, and Barbara Martyr, who have been engaged in a two-year course of study to prepare for this morning. We call this service, we call this process in our community B'nai Torah, uh, that we become children of Torah. Sometimes, just, sometimes we talk about it as adult B'nai Mitzvah, right? Bar or Bat Mitzvah, which we call B'nai Mitzvah in our community, which means that you come of the age of taking on commandments, which we say is 13 years old. Now, that happens whether or not 
That age is accompanied with a special service that we call a B'nai Mitzvah service. And so in our community, we say that this process is the B'nai Torah process, this service that shows that these people who are up here on the bima with us have chosen this path, this two-year amazing path of learning and of study to make Torah and Jewish learning all their own. Some of them are here because when they grew up, women didn't become bat mitzvah or didn't read from the Torah as part of a bat mitzvah service. Some are here because the beauty of Jewish learning and living really struck them a little bit later in life and they wanted to deepen their connections with Judaism and with community. Some of them were inspired by their children's or their grandchildren's own Jewish education or becoming B'nai Mitzvah, and so they chose this path. I want to mention very quickly what some of the goals were of uh, preparing for this day, just a few of them, that these students took on reading Hebrew and understanding select Hebrew words and phrases, leading prayers from the Bima, which they'll be doing this morning, reading a Torah reading directly from the Torah, which is no small task, we'll talk about that more later, and speaking about a selection of Torah and relating it to our lives today. These students have been engaged in lifelong learning classes monthly, They've been part of our Shabbat services in the evening and in the morning. And they've studied weekly with Carol Hanover, TBA's president, and also Hebrew teacher, their Mora, Carol Hanover, who we'll mention more about in a little bit. And so we're honoring them today with a special service marking this sacred and celebratory moment in their lives. As we begin our service, I want to mention that this was not required as part of their course of study, but many of them chose to create a beautiful talit, a prayer shawl that has on it fringes. So you can go ahead and stand up, our, our B'nai Torah group, um, all, all of you, with all of your talitot that you'll be wearing this morning. Ted has a special one that's been in his, uh, or that he purchased specifically for this. Right, is that right, Ted? Yep. Yes, beautiful. And uh, uh, many of them, dyed and silk screened, is that the right term for a murder? Yes, <laughs> silk screened these beautiful talitot as part of the process. The fringes represent all of the mitzvot, all of the holy responsibilities that we have in the world around us. And they're going to prepare to put, put these talitot on. It is their first time for all of them. So we'll help them with two blessings this morning. But before we do that, I'd like to invite Barbara forward who will make a, a special invitation. Shabbat shalom. Um, so I was actually the artist that oversaw this project and it really brought us all together. And um, one of the participants in the Hebrew class, uh, who's not in this, uh, who's not becoming a B'day mitzvah, um, made one too. And I'd like to invite her up to put her talit on. Um, that's Barbara Sands. So would you come up too? And also, I would like to invite Carol Hanover up. So Carol Hanover has been our Hebrew teacher all this time, meeting with us on Zoom as a group and privately, independently. And she's been amazing. And this is kind of a surprise for her, but we made a tali for Carol. <laughs> And knowing that she likes blue, it kind of <laughs> dominates. <laughs> so, and so, and this this is a card you can look at later. I'll just put it aside. Okay. Thank you. So we'll put on these talitot with a special blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Kidshanu. Asher Kidshanu. Bemitzvotav. Bemitzvotav. Vetsivanu. Lehit Atef. Lehit Atef. Batsitzit. Batsitzit. 
Baruch Ata Adonai. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Shehechianu. Vekiamanu. Vehigianu. Lazman Haze. Amen. As our B'nai Torah put on their talitot, they'll have a seat. And Barbara and Carol, you can also have a seat. Beautiful, beautiful talitot. We'll begin together. We'll sing on page 70 of the Mishkan Tefillah, smaller blue sidur that you have in front of you. Page 70, we sing Hine Matov from the Psalms. How good and how pleasant it is that we're all together this morning. Please join me. Continue with Nisim Bechol Yom, giving thanks for everyday miracles on page 80. Cantor will chant the first blessing and then we will alternate responsively in the Hebrew. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lasech Vivina Lavchin Ben Yom Uvein Laila Amen Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, pokeach ivrim. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, matir asurim. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, zokef kefufim. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, roka ha'aretz al ha'mayim. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamechin mitzade gaver. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, malbish arumim. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hanoten leyaev koach. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, amavir sheinayim umeyanai, umit utunma meyafapai. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, sheasani betzelem Elohim. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shasani ben chorin. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shasani Yisrael. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, ozer Yisrael bigvura. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, oter Yisrael betifara. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kiddushanu v'mitzvotav, 
וציוונו לעסוק בדברי תורה. Please read with me in the middle of page 88. These are things that are limitless, of which a person enjoys the fruit of the world, while the principle remains in the world to come. They are honoring one's father and mother, engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study, morning and evening, dealing graciously with guests, visiting the sick, providing for the wedding couple, accompanying the dead for burial, being devoted in prayer, and making peace among people. But the study of Torah encompasses them all. We continue with Chatzik Kaddish, page 106. Yitkada, the Yitkada, Shemeraba, Amen. Verma di Vrahiru Teviam Lich Malhute, Mehaye Hon of Yomin Hon, Ubhaye de Hobet Israel, Agala, Agala, Ubisman Kari Vimeru. Amen. Le'elamin kol birchata v'shirata Tush bechata v'lechemata Tamiran be'alma Bimeru Amen We invite you to rise as you are able. We turn to page 108 as Cantor Wolf invites us into the morning service with the call to prayer, Baruch be seated. <clears throat> we turn to page 110. Ellie Anbinder and Ted Geller will lead us in a blessing of the morning, Yotzer Or. Baruch. Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Ha'olam Yotzer Or Uvre Ko She Se Shalom Uvre Et Hakol Hameir La Aretz Vladim Alacha Barech Uvro Mekadesh Bakol Yom Tamid Masse Bereshi Marabu Maaseka Adonai Kulam Bikochakama Asita Malaha Aretz Kenyanacha Titparach Adonai 
Aluhenu, Al Shavak, Maase, Yadeka, the Al More, or Shiasita, Faruka, Salah, or Kadash, Al Sion, Tair, Vin Zike, Kulanu, Mihare, Le Oro, Baruch Ata, Ananoi, Yotzer, Amora. Amen. Asher Koach to Eli and Ted. We'll continue on page 112. Ahava Rabbah will sing of God's deep love. And I'll ask everyone to echo me um, for this prayer. It's very easy, just two words echoing. Say Ahava. Ahava. Rabba. Rabba. Great. And we'll say it together Ahavtanu. Ahavtanu. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Eloheinu. Beautiful. That's the idea. Ahaba Rabba, 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 I invite you to read responsively with me in the English towards the bottom of the page. Enlighten our eyes with your Torah. Focus our minds on your mitzvot. Unite our hearts in love and reverence for your name. Then we will never feel shame, never deserve rebuke, and never stumble. Having trusted in your great and awesome holiness, we shall celebrate your salvation with joy. Gather us in peace from the four corners of the earth and lead us upright to our land. For you, O God, work wonders. You chose us. Truly, you drew us near to your great name, that we might acknowledge you, declaring you one in love. Praise be you, Adonai, who chooses your people Israel in love. Baruch Ata Adonai, Habocher Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahava. We'll invite our B'nai Torah forward to lead us in the Shema this morning on page 114, 115. And then Sue Siegel will lead us in Ve'ahavta. We'll invite you to rise as you are able. 114, 115. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ephad For Rishem Kivod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed You may be seated. The Ahavta Eight Adonai Elohechal, the Hala Hal, the Hal Nashecha, who the Hal Meodecha, the Hayu Hadvorim Haela, Asher Onohim Mitzcha, Ayom Alevavecha. Vishinanta Livanecha, Vidibarta Amba Am, Vishiftaha Ve Techa, Uvleftaha Vaderech, 
Vaasitem <laughs> Ani Adonai Elohehem Amet Asher Koach to our B'nai Torah and to Sue for leading us beautifully in Ve'ahavta. We'll continue as we sing our people's song of redemption and freedom, Micha Mocha, page 122. And this Micha Mocha has a beautiful echo and I'll invite Rabbi Blumberg to lead you in, in echoing as we sing as we sing together. Come to the central prayer of our morning service, the Amidah. We'll invite Ellen Jair forward, who will lead us in the communal recitation of the Amidah. We'll invite you to rise as you're able. We begin on page 124. I don't know if I can teach a fia gita hila tetha. I don't know. Open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruchata, I don't know. Eloheinu, velohe avotenu, vi imotenu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Isaac. Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Hanora, El El Yom, Gom El Hasodim Tovim, Vikone Hakol, Vizoker Haste, Avot Vigimahot. Who may be Gula live never day ham? Lil Maham Shemo be a hava. Melaho zer umoshia umorgain. Baruchatan, 
Magain Avraham, Beezra Sarah, Atagi Borle Alam Adonon, Mehaye Hakol, Matjaf Rakoshia, Morim Hatal, Mehakel Hayim Behesed, Mehaye Hakol, Berachamim Rabbi, So make no flim, Berofe, Holy. Uma tira suri, umikaye emnato, li shene afa, mi kamo kababu kiru rot, umi domela, velek mi mi, umakaye, umats mi a yeshua. Vin emanata lahayo tako, Baruchata donai, Mehaye ako. Nikade shechim haba olam, Keshem shemaklishim o tobish bimarum, Kakatu valyad ne viecha, Pekara ze elze beamar, Kadosh, 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 Aronai tevaot, Melochol haretz kebodo. Adir adirinu Adonai Adonainu Madir Shimcha Bechol Haaretz Baruch Kevod Adonai Mimekomo Echad Hu Eloheinu Hu Avinu Hu Malkeinu Hu Moshienu Behu Yashmienu Berachem Avleinei Kol Chai Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Im loch Adonai leolam, Eloheich Zion, Ledor vador, Halleluja. Ledor vador nagid god lecha, Ola netach netzachim kedushat hanaktish, Veshiv chacha Eloheinu mipinu lo yamush leolam vaed. Baruch ata Aronai ha'el ha'kadosh. You may be seated. We turn to page 132. We sing together, we celebrate this gift of Shabbat. In the middle of the page, Vishamru. Shabbat shalom. 
We continue silently through page 143. Say Shalom together, page 142. Oh, say Shalom, me, Roma. Oh, yeah, say Shalom, Ale. Peace. We come now to our Torah service. In a moment, we'll be bringing our Sefer Torah, our Torah scroll, out of the ark. We'll be passing it symbolically through our B'nai Torah group, and we'll be bringing it through the sanctuary for a processional. As we do that, I always like to mention the route that we'll be taking as we come through so that you know that you can access the Torah if you'd like to honor it by giving a kiss. Sometimes some people like to honor the Torah by touching the Sidur to the Torah scroll and then giving a kiss to the Sidur. Or if you're wearing a prayer shawl, a talit, you can touch the fringe of the talit to the Torah and then give that a kiss. We try not to turn our back on the Torah as it comes 
through the congregation. So we'll ask that you try and face the Torah wherever it is as it comes through. The root, let's see. Usually we don't have so many people, which is really, really wonderful. So here's the route that we'll be taking. We'll be coming through the right side of the middle aisle here, and we'll be going all the way to the back. Sharon, will we have room in the back to walk through? Behind? Yeah, we'll be good. Okay, excellent. So we'll come to the right here and all the way back, then down this aisle and to the front, forward here, to the back, back again, and then coming along this aisle as we make our way back up to the bima. Thumbs up. Wonderful, wonderful. So as we begin our Torah service, we turn to page 244. We'll invite forward some of the loved ones of the next generation in the lives of our B'nai Torah group uh, who are here to support them. We're going to invite forward May Jayer and Cameron Jayer, who are going to help us open the ark. Jax, Nadia, and Layla Geller. Alex and Lily Levin. Leah and Isabel Levin. Jake and Joel Moyer. And Cece and Fen Fishman. Yep, come on up, all of you. We're going to invite you up twice, actually, as part of the service to open the ark at the beginning and to close it also at the end. Come on up. We'll invite you all to rise as you're able as the ark is open. Page 244. אין כמוך באלוהים אדוני ואין כמעשיך מלכותך מלכות כל עולמים וממשלתך בכל דור אדוני מלך אדוני מלך אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד אדוני עוז לעמו ייתן אדוני יברך את עמו בשלום עבר החמים היטיב אבילסונך את ציון תבנה חומות ירושלים תבנה חומות ירושלים עיר בך לבד בתחנו מלך אל רם ונישא Adon Olamim Page 246 Ki mitzion tetzei Torah Ki mitzion tetzei Torah Udevar Adonai Mi Yerushalayim Page 248 Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Le'adon Yisrael B'Kedushatu Baruch Shana Tan Torah Le'amo Yisrael B'Kedushato. Blessed is God who in holiness gave the Torah to the people Israel. God is always giving Torah. It's us who need to be open to receiving it. Today, each of our B'nai Torah group, each of these individuals 
truly takes Torah into their own hands, truly puts their own stamp on what Torah, on what Jewish learning, on what Jewish community means to them in their lives. So we symbolically pass them the Torah and then we'll begin our processional. <laughs> Shema Israel Adonai Elohinu Adonai Echad Echad Elohinu Gadol Adonai Kadado Shemo Kadur Naiti Un Romema Shemo Yachta Leha Adonai Hagidu
You may be seated. <clears throat> At this point in the service, we're switching over from the blue Mishkan Tefillah that you have to the red Eitz Chaim Chumash that has the text of the Torah in it. So we'll give you a moment to get that out. If you're already ahead of the game, you can turn to page 799. Uh, there are some also on the rack in the back for those in the folding chairs. This is our new, new to us, Eitz Chaim Chumash, that has the text of the Torah along with commentary and the Haftarot. Um, it's a really, really beautiful text. We're grateful that we were able to purchase them in the last several months. Um, and we're also looking for ways to replenish our book fund and to also... Um, Honor, honor folks with a nameplate if you'd like to sponsor one of the Eitz Chaim Chumashim that's here uh, in our sanctuary. And you can do that, of course, after Shabbat, but a wonderful way to, uh, to honor folks with this beautiful Chumash that we have. So this Shabbat, we read from Parashat Naso, which I won't say much about because all of our B'nai Torah are going to be speaking about aspects of the Torah portion and what's in it and how it relates to our lives as part of their being called up to the Torah. The specific part of the Torah portion that we're going to be reading from is uh, Numbers chapter 6, which speaks of the Nazarite, the Nazir, which uh, Ellen will be teaching us about in, in just a little bit. And you'll, you can read along, read along in the English as the Hebrew is chanted. We'll have six aliyot this morning, one for each of our B'nai Torah. They will be called up to the Torah to recite blessings with loved ones in their lives who, who will come up with them and will we'll call them up um, by name in English. In the Hebrew, we'll say, and all, all their loved ones. And after they finish their reading or chanting, some are reading from the Torah, some are chanting, they'll recite the blessings afterwards. We are really, really excited for these folks, and we really, really want to celebrate and honor them, and we try not to clap on Shabbat. So, right, and that feels kind of weird because we want to show our love and support for them. So we'll invite everyone to give some Shabbat sparkles. <laughs> yeah, some Shabbat sparkles so that when our B'nai Torah look out, they see your love and your support and your smiling faces. After each one of them is called to the Torah, they will share their Devar Torah, a word about Torah, with us, and then we'll continue on to our next Aliyah. Thumbs up? Awesome. Wonderful. So we are, again, on page 799, towards the bottom of the page in the Eitz Chaim Chumash. If you flip to the very back of the Chumash, the, the inside cover there, you'll see that the Blessings for before and after the Torah reading are there, as well as the Misha Berach prayer, which we'll say a little bit later in the service. I want to mention just one more thing. That the B'nai Torah who are coming to the Torah, many of them had not read Torah in the past, and they, they really started at Aleph Bet with Carol Hanover. We gave them the vowels and the punctuation and the chanting symbols as part of their preparation. But when they come up to the Torah, we've taken it all away. <laughs> the letters are there, but the vowels are not there. 
This is a, two, a nearly 200 year old Torah that was actually saved from the Holocaust. It has um, a real history to it. And also it's challenging to read. It's, it's small font. Again, there's no vowel, no punctuation. So it shows just how much care, just how much work our B'nai Torah have put into this moment. So we'll begin with our first Aliyah this morning. We invite to the Torah, Laura Moyer. And we'll invite up her husband, Tim, to join her. Ta'amod dafna rivka bat mordechai halevi v'galik ve'ohaveha la'alia harishona. Holy One of Blessing, your presence fills creation. You have enlightened this path with the wisdom of Torah, giving it to the Jewish people as their particular way. Blessed are you, merciful one, who gives this Torah to the Jewish people. Amen. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmim Venatan Banu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Yedaber Adonai Al Moshe Lemor Daber El Bene Yisrael Amarta Alechem Ish Oisha Ki Yafli Lindor Neder Nazir Lehazir Le Adonai Me yain beshechar neder, uh, no, nader nazir, homemates yain behomate shechar lo yishte behomishrat anavim lo yishte be anavim. Behaim Viveshim Lo Baruch Adonai, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet, Vechaye Olam Nata Betocheinu, Baruch Adonai, Noten HaTorah. Amen. That's your Koach Torah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Holy One of Blessing, your presence fills creation. This Torah is a teaching of truth, whole and balanced, and from it comes eternal life. For the people who embrace it, blessed are you, merciful one, who gives this Torah to the Jewish people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and Laura will share some words of Torah with us. Okay. So I have heard the priestly benediction countless times over the course of my life. I remember my hometown rabbi raising his hands over his head 
to deliver the special blessing at the end of services. In our Torah portion, God speaks to Moses, and by extension to us, saying, May God bless you and keep you. May God deal kindly and generously with you. May God bestow God's favor on you and give you peace. The most meaningful commentary I've found involves translations of the second blessing. May God deal kindly translates literally to may God's face shine or may God enlighten you. Many Jewish texts use light as a metaphor, especially to represent studying Torah, doing mitzvot, and following God's commandments. The, De the Dead Sea sect of Qumran includes the words, may God illumine your heart with insight into life and grace you with knowledge of things eternal and lift up God's gracious countenance to you for everlasting peace. Psalm 36 says of God, with you is the fountain of life. By your light do we see light. It is as if God makes a path, a kind of yellow brick road, to help us follow God's teachings and lead a moral life. The light from God's face shining on us reminds us that God is with us and lights a path for us which shows us which way we are to go. It made me think of the light that comes into our lives when we study Torah, when we practice tikkun olam, or when we deal kindly and graciously with others, which in turn lights up our own lives and the lives of those around us. Isaiah 42 reads, I, God, in my grace have summoned you. I created you and appointed you a covenant people, a light of nations. This idea seems especially important right now, as Israel faces perhaps its most difficult moment, moments in decades. The more we can live this priestly blessing, the more we can bring light to others. Yasher Koach, Laura, beautiful. Thank you for your beautiful teaching and your beautiful chanting. <clears throat> we'll continue as our second Bat Torah is called to the Torah. We're on page 800 of the Eitz Chaim. We're going to be reading Numbers 6, <laughs> verses 4 through 6. We'll invite Ellie Ann Binder forward and the loved ones who will be joining her. Bill Rabkin, Kathy, Lino, Molly, and Molly's partner, Sophie, and David, and Ellie's daughter, Rachel, Rachel's husband, Ian, and her grandchildren, Danny, Michaela, and Zach, as well as Ellie's friend, longtime, very close friend, Joyce. Ya amdo et aleya ve ohaveha la ali hashniya. There you go. Did you stay here? Baruch Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Boed. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Boed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bakarbanu Mikol Hamim. Kol Yume Nizro Mikol Asher Ye Ase Migefen Hayayim Mecharetzanim v'ad zag lo 
Yochel. Kol yeme nidir nizro ta'ar lo ya'avor. Al rosho ad milot ha'yamim asher yavzir la adonai kadosh yehiyah gadel Pera Siar Rosho Kol Yume Ha Zero La Danai Al Nefesh Mate Lo Yavo Ellie's going to now share her words of Torah with us. This week, the Torah portion called Nazo contains a very interesting but perplexing story and problem. It is the section called the Sota. Here's what the Sota ritual is about. 3,000 years ago, the Torah said that a husband could take his wife in front of the community and accused his wife of adultery, subjugating her to a humiliating public ritual. This was meant to determine whether or not she had actually committed adultery. The husband is not really asking for a divorce, because if he wants a divorce, he can just do that at any time. Even if there's no evidence of any misconduct, and he does not have to present any proof or substantiate the claim. I was shocked. What do you mean, I asked the rabbi. The man could say anything and just have his way because he was the man and men were in charge? Well, yes. Now, those of you who know me understand I was shocked and dismayed at this passage. How could that be? Of course, remember the Torah is 3,000 years old and was only a verbal con um, conversation until 1,000 years later when the Mishnah, the first major written collection of Jewish oral traditions, was documented. Scholars looked at the Sota portion of the of the Torah and limited its use so much that they essentially did away with the practice. Of course, the Torah is 3,000 years old. And perhaps the rabbis were uncomfortable with the Sota. Okay, it took a thousand years, but don't forget they were in the desert and they didn't have computers. So is there a lesson in all of this and of the Sota? We believe that Jewish tradition is steeped in progress, and so it appears to me the answer is yes. The difference is minor, but it's a reminder that there's a process for changing Jewish law, which is sometimes about limiting the scope so much so that it can not never really happen. By the way, two witnesses had to see the wife seclude herself with a man. She had to be warned, etc., etc. I think the rabbis of 2,000 years ago were progressive in their thinking, and that was comforting and sensible to me. 
It also means that as a Reformed Jew, I have learned that our tradition is open to inclusive thinking and possibilities. That is one of the reasons our family have been members of Temple Beth Am for more than 40 years. I like being part of a progressive way of thinking. Still, we have the question, why the Sota is still part of the Torah readings today? As I mentioned, we do not have to concern ourselves with a flawed law that was only valid in ancient times. After all, we no longer sacrifice the animals as part of our worship practice. We as mortals do not change the Torah, but we adapt its teachings to contemporary practice. As of 2,000 years ago, the rabbis no longer thought about the Sotar ritual as being part of their Jewish practice. And yet, why do we still read these Torah readings? Perhaps it's because we read the entire Torah throughout the year, but we don't necessarily act on every practice that was appropriate thousands of years ago. I found it in, was interesting and hopefully helpful to explain the Torah in contemporary terms. And I'm glad to have had the chance to study Torah from both the ancient and more current perspective here at Beth Am. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yasher Koach. Thank you. Yasher Koach Eli. We continue now with our third Aliyah. We're on page 801 in the Eitz Chaim. Numbers chapter 6, verses 7 through 11. We'll invite forward our Ben Torah, Ted Geller, and his loved ones, his wife Andrea and daughter Hannah, and Joanne Geller, and Gloria, and Arthur Levin. Yamdo Avraham Rachamim, Ben Yehudi Vazisa Chana Ve'ohavav, La Ali Hashlishit. Baruch Adonai Merach, Baruch Adonai Merach, Le'olam Ha'ed, Baruch Adonai Merach, Le'olam Ha'ed, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, Asher Barkarbanu Mekol Ha'im, Benatan Lanu Ketorah, Baruch Adonai Yotein Ha'torah, Amen. I'm out of here. No, just <laughs> Le Aviv Ulimo. Leahiv Ulahoto Lahem Lo Yatima Lahem Ben Motam Ki Nazir Elohav Al Rashel Po 
Yama, Ko Yama, Mizro, Kadosh, Hu, Ladanai, the He, Yamut, Mate, Alav, Pifeta, Pitom, Vitime, Rosh, Rosh, Mizro, The Kilach Rosho Bayom Tahorato Bayom Hash V E Go in No Ruch Ata Adonai Aluhenu Melch Haolam Asher Natin Lanu Torah Lemet Bakayelam Tabakutinu Baruch Ata Adonai Notenu HaTorah Amen. Asher Koach Ted. Give him a hug too. Thank you. Ground him. <laughs> and Ted will share his words of Torah with us. When I first began studying and researching the place of men charged with carrying the ark as outlined in this week's Torah portion, I thought women were being minimized or castigated as underlings in the society. This could not be further from the truth in reality. The women in this bureaucracy held perhaps the most important and highest position in the society, creating a home and educational structure for the youth and future generations of Jews. I read all about all the various positions that the men held in ancient Judaic society, but was failing to see the bigger picture or perspective that women were the gears of the society. Nothing would have advanced and there would have been no educated men to carry the ark as it was the women, the grandmothers, mothers, sisters, and daughters who created the home from which the ark carriers came from. A significant aspect of the women's household responsibilities included the education of her children. According to biblical scholar Carol Myers, beyond their primary role as nurturers in their offspring's early years, mothers, along with others, instructed children by word and example in the technical skills and behavioral modes essential to household life. A woman's daily activities could also be time-consuming as she worked tirelessly to provide food and clothing for her family. Six days a week, women sorted, cleaned, parched, and grounded grain kneaded and baked bread, drew water, collected fuel for cooking, butchered and cleaned small animals, milked, churned butter, made cheese and yogurt, tended vegetable gardens and fruit trees, and preserved meat and fruits for storage. The senior women in the typical extended family household functioned as a household manager. In today's terms, she was the household COO, chief operating officer. It was the hierarchy of the positions in the society that allowed the continuance and advancement of the Jewish people. Everyone had a place and role, and this may be compared to our bureaucracy today. We often associate bureaucracy with a negative connotation, but if the recycling and refuse centers stopped doing their job, our neighborhoods, towns, and cities would grind to a halt. If the police officers stopped patrolling the streets, there would be disastrous accidents and chaos everywhere. If the postal workers stopped mail delivery, uh, would come to a halt, bills would not get paid, letters would not get posted, etc. Without the bureaucratic design of ancient Judea and the critical roles women foremost and men almost secondarily played, there would have been, never been such an amazing society as ancient Israel. We see the place, power, and importance of women versus men in the society 
Clearly, it clearly places the women in a unique position as head of household. Therefore, the ark carriers, although in religious terms, were held in high regard and status. It is the women who mothered, birthed, raised, and educated these men who truly shone as having an extremely important role bureaucratically in ancient Israel. If these incredible women did not perform their duty or roles as CEO of the household, then this society would never have been, and there may well have never been any ark or ark carriers. I found that it was through my own daughter and her Jewish studies and commitment that I was summoned to strengthen my Jewish faith through this B'nai Mitzvah process. I would like to share a poem I wrote that I believe provides a greater understanding of the roles both the ark carriers and the Hebrew, Hebrew women played in ancient Judea. It's titled Carriers. Women were and are the ultimate carriers. The Jewish women managed the home front. They carried the ark carriers. They taught the ark carriers, but they were not allowed to carry the ark. Why? Roles needed to be fulfilled. Duties needed to be tended. Women managed the home front, carried the ark carriers. They taught the ark carriers. Levite men carried the ark. Why? This was their role. This was their duty. Women prepared them. Women were and are the ultimate carriers. Today, women can not only carry the ark, they can build the ark and lead the prayers in the ark. Women are and were the ultimate carriers in our Jewish faith. The Levite ark carriers had a role in ancient Hebrew bureaucracy carrying the ark. The women also had their roles in ancient Hebrew bureaucracy carrying the carriers, both carriers, women carried the ark carriers, the Levite men carried the ark. Women were and are the ultimate carriers. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> Beautiful Torah. Thank you for sharing. Ted, Yasher Koach to you. We'll continue now with our fourth Aliyah, also on page 801 of the Eitz Chaim Chumash. Numbers chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. We'll invite forward our Bat Torah, Ellen Jair, and her loved ones, her husband Billy Jair, Eric, her son Eric, and wife Heather Jair, with Levi Jair, and Bradley and Christine Jair. Ya amdu chayabat Avraham vesara veohaveha la alia harivit. Baruchu et Adonai Hamvora, Baruch Adonai Hamvora, Leolam Vaed, Baruch Adonai Hamvora, Leolam Vaed, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam, Asher Bahabano Mikol Hamim, Benatan Lanu et Torato, Baruch Adonai Notein Hatora. Amen. Uvayom Hashmini Yavi Shate Torim Oshone Yone El Hakohain El Petah Ohe Moed Veasa Hakohain Erhad Lehatat Veerhad Leola Behi Per Alav Meashata Alha Nafesh Vikidash et Rosho by Yom Hahu Behi Zer Ladonai et Yeme Nizro Behavi Keves Ben Shinoto Leasham Behayomim Harishonim Yi Plu Ki Tome Nizro
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Asher natan lanu Torah emet, Vahaye olam notah betoheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, notain ha'torah. Amen. Shakoach to Ellen and her family, all these jairs. <laughs> we'll invite Ellen to share some words of Torah with us. Shabbat Shalom. The, se the section I will be discussing is the Nazarite, which begins following the passage on the Sota and is the portion we are all chanting from this morning. The root of the word nazir, which is nun zayin resh, means to dedicate. The nazir dedicates himself or herself to the service of God, similar to the consecration of a priest. There is no stated time frame for this service. The Nazarite must adhere to the following. All intoxicants and grape products are strictly forbidden from the nazir. This is an even less severe prohibition than the ones maintained by the priests. The hair is to remain untrimmed during the time that he or she is a Nazarite. The Nazarite is forbidden to go near a corpse. If any contact is made with the dead body, then the status of the Nazir is disrupted. The Nazarite may then bring an offering to the tent of meeting, and their time period as a Nazarite starts again. When the Nazarite concludes his or her vow to devote themselves to God, the Nazarite must bring a series of offerings to the tent of meeting where they are burned in a fire, along with the Nazarites here, which is placed under the ram of the sacrifice offering. Initially, I was incredibly pleased that the Nazarite could be either a man or a woman, because so often in the Torah we see women excluded. Even in my life in 1964, when I became bat mitzvah as a young woman, I was only allowed to read Haftarah, which limited me from reading from the Torah of our people. As I began to read further, I realized that the life of a Nazarite with the vows that were taken were supposed to make the Nazir closer to God. But we already have 613 mitzvot, which provide us the ways of living our lives the way God intended. And if we follow them, then we will live a life of moderation without excess. The Nazarite takes it one step further, separating and denying themselves of some of the pleasures of the world that God created. This personal vow does not make me think that it was taken to help the Jewish people, but it reflects a personal need by either the man or the woman for a failing in their own character. Having gone to excess in other places in their lives, we should all aspire to enjoy our lives in moderation and the mitzvot in the Torah to help us get there. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. I don't know if she saw all those sparkles. Can we do it again? Look look at the sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> Yesher Koach, Ellen. We'll continue with our fifth aliyah on page 802 of the Eitz Chaim Chumash, Numbers chapter 6, verses 13 through 15. We invite forward our Bat Torah, Susan Siegel, and we'll invite also her daughter, Abby Siegel, and Abby's partner, Travis, Sue's brother, Ted Potensky, and Sue's cousins, Rob and Don Tenenbaum. Yamdo Sara Esther Bat Yaakov Reitzel Ve'ohaveha La'aliyah Hamishit Yeah, okay.
Holy One of Blessing. Your, fr your presence fills creation. You have enlightened this path with the wisdom of Torah, giving it to the Jewish people as their particular way. Blessed are you, merciful one, who gives this Torah to the Jewish people. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMavarach Baruch Adonai HaMavarach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai HaMavarach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Barhar Banu Mikol HaAmin Venatan Lanu et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai no tain ha Torah. Right here, right here. Okay. The Zot Torah. Hanazir Biyom Malot Yeme Nizro Yavi Oto El Petach Ohel Moed Vihi Kriv et Karbano Ladanai Keves Benchnato Tamid echa leala vehafsa baahat bat shnata timima lehatat vehayil echad tamim lishlamim. This all mazot so let halot. Bililot ba shaman worki ke mazo mishuhim ba shaman umin hatam venis ke hem. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Vehaye Olam Natan Bitochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Holy One of Blessing Holy One of Blessing, your presence fills creation. This Torah is a teaching of truth, whole and balanced, and from it comes eternal life for the people who embrace it. Blessed are you, merciful one, who gives this Torah to the Jewish people. Amen. Sue will teach us her words of Torah this morning. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. In this week's Torah portion in Numbers chapter 5, God directs Moses to speak with the Israelites about wrongs inflicted by one person to another, therefore breaking faith with God. As God's voice, Moses urges that those who mistreated another to come clean with their guilt and confess their wrong. As a result of admitting their guilt, God, again through Moses' voice, commands the guilty man or woman to make restitution to the person who has been harmed. When the person who has been harmed accepts apology, mending, be 
begins between the two people uh, to make it whole. Therefore, their relationship may move ahead in a positive direction if both people agree. As I continue to think about this section of the Torah, I thought about how complex Judaism is regarding relationship building, nurturing, and sustaining. I deeply care about my friendships with, uh, with others. I even have my friend Betsy here. We have been friends, camp friends, since we were 11 years old. Yet in my adult life, I have had many close friends who I have hurt, even inadvertently, and they have hurt me. However, my desire always is to mend our friendship, to make things right, because I am a peacemaker at heart. How may you ask? Again, reflecting on this week's portion, God sets the expectation of giving restitution as 100% plus 20% to the person harmed, unless the hurt person has no relatives. As for me, I make restitution with those whom I have hurt by accepting responsibility for my own actions and apologizing with words, which brings us to 100%, and then I do a good deed, which adds the other 20%. Making amends with a relative, friend, or colleague is so comforting, especially when both share the emotions that come along with restitution, sometimes with a lot of tears. For me, this is the real essence of teshuva. May we take this lesson from this week's Torah portion as a guide to become better human beings when we have failed in our relationships, hopefully giving us direction to build meaningful, lifelong friendships with others through restitution and forgiveness. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for being here for me and our B'nai Torah co cohort. Thank you, Sue. Yasher Koach. Yasher Koach. <clears throat> At this point in our service with the Torah out, we'll pause to say a prayer for those in need of healing and comfort this Shabbat. I invite you to take a moment to bring into your mind and bring into your heart the names and the faces of loved ones, family, and friends who are in need of healing of body, spirit, or mind. Our community prays for healing, comfort, and strength for Judy Pinstein, David Ben Sol, Clint Knight, Lisa Movitz, Rose Kratian, Gladys Dorfman, Risha Kayla Batnatan Vesara, Sarah Manente, Andrew Aharon Lefko, Leslie Jaffe, Bryna Curley, Vivianne Levine, Randy Gardell, Herlinda Kovarubius, Marsha Bachman, Rachel Leabat Golda, Joey Pepe, Sammy Kalaora, Judy Rosenfield, Nina Pelton, Barbara Simpson, Ray Batista, Andy Hermanson, Lois Levick, Dan Brandenburg, Terry Wallen, Luna Ojadok, Jeff Clark, Edith Clark, Eileen Feldman, Cindy Canagas, Peter Tower, Arlene Barton, Kathy Clinton, Erwin Ennis, Michael Satter, Randy Singer, Lori Mulsman, Belin Manguel, Harriet Diamond, and Etel Meshulam. There are others for whom you're praying for healing. I'll invite you to say their name aloud. This morning, I'm going to point in general directions, and I'll invite everyone to say those names together as we raise up those names and pray for their healing. And if you're joining us on Zoom, you can put their name into the chat. They'll be read aloud here in the sanctuary.
anyone who's not had an opportunity to say a name aloud, I invite you to say their name aloud now. Alan, any names on Zoom? We'll pray for healing together with the Misha Berach prayer, which you'll find on the inside back cover of the Eitz Chaim Chumash. Continue with our final Aliyah this morning, the sixth Aliyah, which you'll find on page 802 of the Eitz Chaim Chumash, Numbers chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. We'll invite forward our Bat Torah, Barbara Martyr. We acknowledge and honor this morning the family who has come to support her, her children, Melissa and Eric. If you'll just rise in your place to show your support. Hold on, Steve, we'll call you up in just a second. And Barbara's six grandchildren, if you'll rise to show your support of your grandmother this morning. Beautiful. You can have a seat. And we'll invite forward Barbara's husband, Steve, who will recite the Torah blessings with her. Ya amdo pesa banya chaya bat eliyahu af Ephraim rabbi valeya zaman mordechai ben zele Joel verachaleya laalia hashishit. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachabanu Mikal Hamim Vinatan Lano Et Toto Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen This is in my way. But I read this one, right? Yep. He grieve a Kohen, lift nee Adonai, asa et hatato, 
Vi är ett ola to. Vi är hajil. Abba ya asa. Seva. Shlamim. Ladonai al. Kal. Hamatot. Asal. Hamatot. Ya asa. Hakohen. Et. Min chato. Vi et nisko. Begilach anazir petach o helmoed et rosh zavach vilak nizro vilakach et saar et niz saar rosh nizro vinatan al haish Asher tachat zevak and Steve. And Barbara will share her words of Torah with us. So today we read from the book of Numbers in the Torah. Numbers is significant to me because last June 21st, I reached the age of 78, which is divisible by 13, six times. Typically, one becomes a bat mitzvah at the age of 13. Since I missed it the first time around, I decided I was going to commit to the study of Torah and learning Hebrew this year. I'm just getting it in since my birthday is next week, and I will no longer have an age divisible by 13. <laughs> I read the entire book of Numbers, kind of like reading a telephone book. Essentially, it is a detailed census listing patriarchs and their tribes. The reading continues to discuss who among these numbers will be permitted to enter the holy tabernacle, the holiest of holy places thought to be the house of God. Many prohibitions prevented people from entering and my particular topic involves the first wave of rejectees, those with ritual impurity. Biblically, ritual impurity cites open wounds, bodily discharges, and contact with dead people. Specific aspects of these impurities cited in micro-scale detail are grossly unpleasant to visualize. My first reaction to this topic was that it has no relevance to me, and I had gotten the short stick considering how many elegant passages exist in the Torah. <laughs> but after further consideration, it dawned on me that this Torah portion has everything to do with today. The big picture here is who gets in? Who gets into the Holy Tabernacle and... Thinking about the present day, who gets in anywhere? Those with COVID, for example, would be considered impure and during the pandemic needed to be isolated from society. Who gets into elite universities? So much attention has been directed to this topic that is yet to be resolved. Who attends the presidential inaugural ball? Who gets the best seats at sports events? Who gets the premium concert tickets? Who gets the donated liver for a transplant? Who gets into the honor society? Who gets into the United States and gets to stay and live here? What parameters do we establish as a society? I think you get my point. My portion deals with extreme biblical guidelines for those who will be granted access to the tabernacle. These rules set standards for moral behavior and physical cleanliness that are archaic but the idea of guidelines seems relevant. And just thinking about that, I wonder, how can I get in? How can I be sure I am living up to the guidelines of Judaism? 
Striving to be physically, mentally, and spiritually the best person I can be might be a start. Quoting from our prayers, I will end with, may the words of my mouth and, my, and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. Shabbat shalom. Yasher Koch, thank you, Barbara. Mazel tov to you and to your family. We'll continue this morning with the lifting and tying of our Torah scroll. We're going to invite forward Barbara Sands, who's going to help with the tying of the Torah scroll this morning. And we will invite you to rise as you are able, as the Torah scroll is lifted. Tamod balasurabas avram legila. Zot Torah, Asher Samoshe, Livne Bene Israel, Api Adonai, Beyan Moshe. Torah, 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 You may be seated. We continue with the Haftarah portion this morning. That is a complementary portion that mirrors some of the themes from our Torah portion. We're going to be on page 813, reading from Judges chapter 13, verses 2 through 25 this morning. This story from the book of Judges will tell of the birth of of the prophet or the judge, Samson, who was a Nazir, a Nazarite, thus linking this story with uh, with our Torah portion from this morning. Barbara Sands will recite the Haftarah in English and will invite forward Laura Moyer and Barbara Martyr, who will recite the blessings before and after the Haftarah reading. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Bachar Bim Bim Tovim Vevratza Vedivrehem Hane Emarim Bemet Baruch Ata Adonai Habocher Batorah Uv Moshe Avdo, Uv Yisrael Amo, Uv Inviye Ha'emet Batzedek. There was a certain man from Zorah of the stock of Don, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, You are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now be careful not to drink wine or other intoxicant or to eat anything impure, for you are going to conceive and bear a son. 
Let no razor touch his head, for the boy is to be a Nazarite to God from the womb on. He shall be the first to deliver Israel from the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God, very frightening. I did not ask him where he was from, nor did he tell me his name. He said to me, You are going to conceive and bear a son. Drink no wine or other intoxicant and eat nothing impure, for the boy is to be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Manoah pleaded with the Lord. Oh, my Lord, he said, please let the man of God that you sent come to us again and let him instruct us how to act with the child that is to be born. God heeded Manoah's plea, and the angel of God came to the woman again. She was waiting in the field, and her husband Manoah was not with her. The woman ran in haste to tell her husband. She said to him, The man who came to me before has just appeared to me. Manoah promptly followed his wife. He came to the man and asked him, Are you the man who spoke to my wife? Yes, he answered. Then Manoah said, May your words come soon come true. What rules shall be observed for the boy, the angel of the Lord said to Manoah. The woman must abstain from all the things against which warned, which warned her. She must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine or drink wine or other intoxicant or eat anything impure. She must observe all that I commanded her. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, let us detain you and prepare a kid for you. But the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, If you detain me, I shall not eat your food. And if you present a burnt offering, offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know that he was an angel of the Lord. So Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? We should like to honor you when your words come true. The angel said to him, You must not ask for my name. It is unknowable. Manoah took the kid and the grain offering and offered them up to the rock to the Lord. And a marvelous thing happened while Manoah and his wife looked on. As the flames leaped up from the altar toward the sky, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flames of the altar. While Manoah and his wife looked on and they flung themselves on their faces to the ground, the angel of the Lord never appeared again to Manoah and his wife. Manoah then realized that it had been an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, for we have seen a divine being. But his wife said to him, As had the Lord meant to take our lives, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and grain offering from us, now, <clears throat> nor let us see all these things, and he would not have made such an announcement to us. The woman bore a son, and she named him Samson. The boy grew up, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord first moved him in the encampment of Don between Zorah and Eshtal. Baruch Ata Anunai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Ha'olam Zorachal Ha'olamim Sadiq Bachal Hadarot Ha'el Ha'ne'eman, Ha'amid, Boseh, Ham, Ham, Hamadabar, Shechol, Devarav, Emet, Batsadek. Al HaTorah, V'al HaAvodah, V'al Hanavi'im, V'al Yom HaShabbat HaZeh. Shanatata Lanu, Adonai Eloheinu Likdusha Valim Nucha Likavod Utifarat Al Hako Adonai Eloheinu Anachnu Bodim Lach Umvarakim O Tach Yisbarach Shemcha Behol Betri kol hai hamid leolam vaed baruch ata anunai mekahadesh.
Shabbat Amen. Asher Koach, thank you. Yep, yep, we can do those. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to Laura, to Barbara Martyr, and to Barbara Sands for beautiful reading and chanting. We'd like to invite our B'nai Torah to rise, please, and to come just over here so I can see you, but also see everybody here. Mazel tov to all of you. This is the moment when you're all, all of you done chanting and reading and leading prayers this morning. And Pirke Avot, which is the chapters of fundamental, fundamental principles, teaches very simple three, three words. Lefum tsara agra. According to the effort is the reward. According to the effort is the reward. And these six people who are in front of us have put in so, so much effort to get to this moment over the last two years. We are so very proud of them. And our prayer is that you feel that reward in your hearts, right? Maybe not in this moment, but maybe like in an hour. <laughs> but we hope that you'll feel the rewards of deepened study and learning of opened doors in Judaism and in your lives, of authentic connection with our tradition, with one another, and with our community. You've proven to us, truly, that uh, it's true what, what we read in the book of Deuteronomy, lo bashamayim hi. Moses says, the Torah is not in some far off place. It's not up in the heavens that it's inaccessible to us in our lives. But in fact, and we have it here on one of the beautiful stained glass pieces in our sanctuary, ki karov elecha hadavar me'od uvil vacha la'asot. Truly, it is close to you. It is very close to you. In, in, your, in your heart, to do, to listen. Torah is right here with you. And you've proven that to us today. We're so very proud of you and inspired by you in this moment. And I want to say again, you're done. Take a moment to look out, just like a relief moment to look out and see all of the people who are here to show their love and support of you today. We have a few special gifts to present to you. And I'd like to invite Carol Hanover forward, who uh, has been with you, with each of you, every step of the way to help you, especially with your uh, reading of Hebrew and chanting and, um, and learning the prayers for this morning. What we have for each of you is Teodat B'nei Uvenot Mitzvah, this beautiful certificate that's not blank. Each one of yours is, is filled out that says, you did it, you made it to this amazing milestone, to this wonderful occasion. We also have the gift for you of, this is called the JPS Jewish Heritage Torah Commentary. We recognize that today certainly is not an ending of Torah study and learning for our B'nai Torah, but it is uh, one step along your journey. This commentary has in it uh, commentary on Torah, on Jewish peoplehood, on connections to the land of Israel and Jewish thought. So we hope that you'll find it, uh, you'll find a place for it on your Jewish bookshelf for Shabbatot in the future. So I'd like to invite Laura Moyer forward. Laura, um, you joined, you and your family joined the temple just about two years ago, which was exactly when we were putting out the call for our B'nai Torah group. And you came to that first meeting and you jumped in with two feet, having two wonderful, beautiful young kids at home, Jake and Joel, 
and having all these kids in your classroom <laughs> as a teacher by day, and you committed yourself to this process. And we are so blessed by your presence with our community and in this B'nai Torah group. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Ellie Ann Binder. Come, come. I, I don't bite. Ellie, as you said, your family has been part of the synagogue for more than 40 years. And as you also said, you didn't have the opportunity to become bat mitzvah. But I think about this bima and about the milestones that you and your family have shared here. I think about the many B'nai Mitzvah that you've been part of. Your own daughters, their B'not Mitzvah, and your five beautiful, wonderful grandchildren who are here to support you today. And today, it's your turn for this beautiful milestone in what I'm thinking of as simply the most beautiful inversion of Lador Vador, right? We say from generation to generation, and you have shown today truly that that's the case in a little bit of a different way, but a very, very beautiful way. Mazel tov to you, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Geller, come on forward. Ted, you were a little unsure at first. Am I going to join? Am I going to not join the group? Right? A little bit hesitant. But as you shared with our congregation this morning, you saw your own daughter Hannah's connection to Judaism. You saw how it touched her deeply. And you wanted that for yourself as well. And Along this process, you've got your students too, and Hannah at home, and busy life, lots going on. And you made the time to deepen your Torah learning, your Hebrew learning, reading from the Torah so beautifully. And you've shared with me, and so I'll say it in front of everybody here too, that I know you want to continue your learning, continue coming to our lifelong learning classes, continuing to add to your Jewish bookshelf as we continue along. So we wish you only from strength to strength. Mazel tov. Ellen Jair. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> I know you, Ellen, and I know that you'd prefer that we just don't say anything, that we maybe hand you the book and you go back to your place. <laughs> You're very humble, Ellen. But today is a day to be proud. To be proud of this accomplishment that I know you've been looking forward to for many years. And to recognize that you've truly solidified your place, not only as the glue that holds this community together, which you are, but also to solidify your place as a prayer leader, as a Torah reader, and as a Torah scholar. We are so proud of you. We hope that you're proud of yourself as well. Mazel tov. Susan Siegel. I assume. Like everything that you do, Sue, you came to this process with an open heart, with an earnest heart, and with real, true dedication. It's important to you to do it right. And you did it today so beautifully and so right, and make us and you've made us all so proud. And I have been touched by 
the way you see Torah, the way that you see every word, every snippet of Torah, not just something out there, right? Lo he, but truly it touches your heart and it teaches you about your own life and ways that we can move forward in holiness. Mazel tov. <laughs> Achorna, achorna, chaviva. Last but not least, Barbara Martyr. <laughs> Barbara, um, you have such a creative mind, right? And we all we all know that you do beautiful art and jewelry, and brought this beautiful, beautiful project to the B'nai Torah group to create your own talitot and to deepen your connections with one another and with Jewish ritual. But you bring your creative mind also to your study of Torah, to the way that you see Judaism playing that important role in your life. And not only your creativity, but your, your positivity, your optimism, your smile brings such an infectious joy to Jewish life and Jewish living that it's truly an inspiration for all of us. Mazel tov. We'll celebrate this beautiful moment in our community as we turn to page 344. We have this special prayer for one time milestone, beautiful occasions, the Shehechianu prayer. We'll invite you to rise as you are able as we sing this prayer together. Yeah. To you, to your families, to our whole community. Mazel tov. May we go from strength to strength. We'll invite you to remain standing. We are flipping back over to the Mishkan Tefillah Sidur, the blue Mishkan Tefillah Sidur. We're going to invite all those kids who we invited up earlier to come on back up. You know who you are. All of these wonderful kids in the lives of our B'nai Torah. They'll open the ark. We're on page 256 as we return the Torah to the ark. Page 256.
may be seated. We'll invite forward again Carol Hanover to lead us in a prayer for our country and the prayer for the state of Israel, pages 258 and 259. On page 258, you may join with me. O guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. Teach us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those who are in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation and alert to the care of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace May we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they govern with justice and compassion. Help us all to appreciate one another and to respect the many ways that we may serve you. May our homes be safe from affliction and strife, and may our country be sound in body and in spirit. Amen the Amen. Continuing on page 259 in the Hebrew. She'alu shalom Yerushalayim, yishlayu o havayich. Avinu sheba shamayim, sur Yisrael v'goalo, barech et medinat Yisrael, reshit zmimchat geulatenu. Again alecha be'evrat chazdecha, ufros alecha sukat shlomecha. Ushlach orcha, the Amitra, the Rashiha, Sarecha, the Yo Atsecha, the Taknem, the Eitsa Tova, Milfanecha, the Natata Shalom, Baaretz, the Shimchat, Olam, the Yoshvecha, the Nomar, Amen. In the English together, please. O Heavenly One, Protector and Redeemer of Israel, Bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shield it beneath the wings of your love. Spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Amen the Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. We'll continue with some thank yous from our B'nai Torah group. Uh, I think I'm inviting Sue Siegel forward, is that right? On behalf of the B'nai Torah group. Again, Shabbat Shalom. To Da Rabbah, thank you. To Mara, our teacher, Carol Hanover. Rabbi Blumberg and Cantor Wolf for their encouragement, gentle feedback, 
and of course, sending the message of perseverance, which you saw today. More specifically, Carol Hanover is a mensch through and through. Carol stood by us weekly and tutored us individually to learn our Torah portions and prayers. Carol is Temple Beth Ahn's leader extraordinaire. We tend to believe she will have as much separation anxiety night anxiety not meeting with us on future Monday nights. Rabbi Blumberg's determination to bring our Devar Torah cohort together was incredible, especially as he balances all the spirit spiritual needs of our congregation. His ability to accommodate our schedules, to learn about who we are, why we wanted to achieve this Jewish milestone of B'nai Torah was extraordinary. His guidance with our Devar Torah portions and how best to approach our Torah portions was enlightening. Cantor Wolf's patience to listen to us and our cross-section of musical abilities was amazing. <laughs> you know we're not cantorial students, right? <laughs> He also provided us with individual Torah readings and the best ideas how to learn the portions. We, we also applaud him for listening to our accents and levels of Hebrew. Ellie Anbinder, Ted Geller, Ellen Jair, Barbara Martyr, Laura Meyer, and myself are, gr are so grateful as you guided and mentored us through this very important Jewish journey. It doesn't end here. And the next chapter includes learning and finding ways to contribute to our Temple Beth Am community. We say to our children, Lador Vador, from generation to generation, to walk the walk to strengthen our TBA community. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Sue, and to the whole B'nai Torah group for your beautiful hakarat hatov, your sharing of gratitude. It's been, I know, an honor and a blessing, and I'm looking at you, Carol, for all of us, uh, yeah. Carol and Cantor and I, to be with you every step away, every step of the way of this beautiful process. Mazel tov. We'll invite you to rise as you are able. We turn to page 282 for the Alenu prayer. The ark is opened. We start to come to our concluding prayers. Alenu le shabeach la don hakol la tekudu la le yoseb le shit shelo asanu tego yeha adatzot velo samanu kemishpechot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vegon alenu kechol hamona vanachnu koreim umishtachavim uvodim lifnei melech machei hamlatim hakadosh baruchu page 287 v'nevar v'haya adonai the <laughs> We invite you to remain standing as we turn towards the mourner's Kaddish this morning. Our community is remembering Irene Gunner, whose funeral was this past week, TBA member, mother of Nancy Gunner and Lori Royer. We remember this week's yard sites. Miriam K. Bayerson, Abraham Brenner, Rose Nadler Berman, Flora G. Beyer, Friedel Karch, Nathan Chart, Herbert Cole, Ruth Copeland, Hank Dorfman, Harold Egon, Stuart Freudberg, Irene Goldberg, Phyllis H. Goodman, Rose Grossman, Victoria Havian, Jack A. Kaplan, Jacob Katz, Olga Kozak, 
Maurice I. Kress, Joseph Macta, Jacob S. Malsberg, Marsha Miller, Joseph Meyer Merman, Arthur I. Moses, Rose Moses, Vladimir Peckel, Joanne C. Pell, Patricia Patsy Pelton, Emmanuel Reisman, Myra Reisman, Victor Resch, Louis Rosenblatt, Saul Rosenthal, David Silver, Harry Silverberg, Benjamin Sidimer, Anna Weiss, and Henry Winkeller. There are others for whom you're saying Mortar's Kaddish this morning. I'll invite you to say their name aloud now. I'll first point to this side of the room and then this side, first to our B'nai Torah. We sanctify God's name together with the words of Mourner's Kaddish, page 294. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei raba, be'alma divira chirute v'yamlich malchute, be'chaye chon uv'yome chon, uv'chaye dechol beit Yisrael, ba'agala uv'izman kariv v'imeru, amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mevorach Leolam Ulalme Almaya Yit Barach Vegishta Bach Vegit Paar Vegit Romam Vegit Nase Vegit Hadar Vegit Ale Vegit Halal Shme de Kudesha Brichu La Ela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata Tushbechata Venechemata Da Amiran Be Alma Vimeru Amen Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vechayim Alenu Ve Alkol Yisrael, Vimeru Amen. Ose Shalom Bimromav, Hu Ya Ase Shalom, Alenu Ve Alkol Yisrael, Vimeru Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and to the whole world, to which we say, Amen. You may be seated. We'll sing together this morning as our service comes to a close. Adon Olam, page 321. I'll invite everyone to echo me. Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Asher Malam, Asher Malam, Beterem Ko, Beterem Ko, Yetzir Nivra, Yetzir Nivra, Yet Nasa, Yet Nasa, Mechef Soko, Mechef Soko, Adon Olam, 
I'd like to invite forward Rabbi Emeritus of Temple Beth Am, Rabbi Don Splansky, who has been part of milestones for many of those on our Bima over the years. For a special prayer, a final benediction this morning. So I've been asked to say a few words. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of all of these B'nai Torah people. Torah given at Sinai, attributed to Moses, comes down again on this Shabbat, especially to these wonderful people, some of whom I have known for 40 years, as we have come through the wilderness together, and others who are still quite new to our community, but are a very good and sacred part of it. Usually I say that uh, to say a few words is, takes as long as it does for a rabbi just to catch his breath. Um, but I won't bore you, especially since the service is longer than most services. But it has been a privilege to be part of it. And I know that everyone here feels the same way as a witness to an important event. Important in their lives and memorable in our own. May we all take new interest in studying Torah new strength from their strength, and new devotion to God's purpose for us on earth. We're about to uh, recite these words of blessing, which come from our Torah reading, the uh, lection for this morning from Parashat Nasol, uh, a little further in the reading than we got to read this morning. But certainly we've heard it time and again at services and other great life cycle of events. So with the invitation and permission of Rabbi Blumberg, as you just got the motion, please rise. <laughs> May the eternal God bless you and keep you. May the eternal God shine light upon you and wisdom of Torah and bless you always with great grace and wisdom yourselves. May the eternal God grant you great favor, long life and joy and continued benefits from study and always bless you with the highest blessing of peace.
come forward that you have a question. Yeah. <laughs> We'll recite Kiddush and Motzi together, as is our custom at the end of the service, celebrating this day with the joy of wine. <coughs> <laughs> we'll say Motsi together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Amotzi Lechem Min HaOretz Amen And Mazel Tov to these amazing people Simen Tovu, Mazel Tovu, Mazel Tov Simen Tov, Simen Tov, Mazel Tov Mazel Tov, Simen Tov Simen Tov, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov Simen Tov, Mazel Tov Mazel Tov, Usimen Tov, a good sign for all of us, for all Israel and all people everywhere. Mazel Tov, Shabbat Shalom. Please grab a treat and uh, say Mazel Tov to our B'nai Torah before you leave this morning. Shabbat Shalom to us all. Shabbat shalom, hey, Shabbat shalom, hey, Shabbat shalom, hey, Shabbat shalom.